Hey students, I'm so glad to be back with you this week. We are going to be talking about conversations. So one of the things I want you to think about is can you remember a conversation that you've had that you think was really good? Or maybe can you think of a conversation you had that was just awkward? I'm gonna give you just a second, think through. A good conversation or just an awkward conversation? You have that one in your head? I have one that pops in my mind whenever I think of an awkward conversation. Lots of years ago, I was meeting a group of people that I had not ever met before. If you know me, sometimes I use sarcasm to warm the conversation. Sometimes it has a good effect and sometimes it just doesn't go well. And in this particular conversation, it just didn't go well. So the conversation was going on and someone was talking about some friend I didn't know that was acting a, just a little bit odd. And for some reason, no idea why, I've never said this before in my life, but I said, what, do they have a metal plate in their head? And the conversation died. And everybody was looking at me, in particular the person right across. And this individual said, I have a metal plate in my head. And I thought, I have no idea. I was trying to scramble out of that conversation, but as you can imagine, it never recovered. Daryl was with me at that conversation and my husband was saying, what were you thinking? I said, I didn't know that person had a metal plate in their head. There was no way I would have known that. So to this day, which has been years and years and years ago, he always says, don't talk about metal plates, but who would have known, right? It's hard when you're doing conversations because you know your side, but you have no idea what the other people are gonna say. It's a journey, it's an adventure. You're trying to figure out, what am I gonna say? How do I respond? But at the same time, you have to really be a good listener to figure out how to make connections and how not to be awkward and how to really make sure the conversation is going in a direction that's healthy and good and has a point, right? Today, as we look in scripture, we're gonna to get to see a conversation that Jesus had with two followers immediately after the resurrection. In Luke 24, 13, there's a story which I love and it talks about the road to Emmaus. So I'm gonna read just a little bit of that. Let's watch at how Jesus is a master conversation holder and see what happens to this conversation. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. And then one of them named Cleopas answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, what things? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us and they were at the tomb early in the morning and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that he had, they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. I love this passage because, one, they don't recognize Jesus until the very end when he's getting ready to leave them um, in, in the verses that follow. But Jesus does some very interesting things. He comes into a conversation and he doesn't just interject. He tries to find out what are they talking about? What's going on? And he listens where they are and makes connections. He finds out what's been going on. He knows, 
He knows what's going on, but he listens to their heart. He listens to what's going on. And then at the very end, I love that he begins with Moses and all the prophets. He interpreted them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. He figures out how to make that conversation into a gospel conversation. What does that look like for us? We're always talking about having gospel conversations. What I want you to think about is what does it look like for you to listen very well to conversations you're walking into? Don't just try to think, how can I be funny? How can I enter into this conversation and bring the attention to me? But when you walk into a conversation, what if you began to listen and really try to figure out where's the conversation going? And then second, what if you began to figure out how can I bring Jesus into this conversation? How can I bring him in and, and actually move this conversation to Christ? What does that look like for you? So maybe it starts with you just waking up in the morning and having a conversation with Jesus himself and saying, Lord, today and as many conversations as I, as I can have, help me bring you into the conversation and help me listen to know when is the right time to bring you into the conversation. I hope you have a great week and we're praying for you.